Hey everyone, and welcome back to another installment of the OTICS Cybersecurity video series. Uh, my name is Joel. I am a program manager in cloud cybersecurity, currently focused on more community outreach. Uh, and with me, I have Tavisha. Hey everyone, my name is Tavisha. Thanks, Joel. I am a product manager in cloud and AI cybersecurity, and I'm currently working on a third party product that focuses on securing ICS and OT organizations. Awesome. And yeah, today we're going to be diving deeper into a specific OT ICS scenario that we mentioned in the previous video. Um, like we mentioned, there's a lot of different um, applications of this in terms of you can have factories with these systems, you can have uh, manufacturing plants, um, energy plants. The one we're focused on today will be data centers. Um, and it's very, I would say, important to Microsoft as one of the leading cloud providers because the cloud basically runs on a global system of data centers. Um, so before we get into the cybersecurity aspect of it, we're going to a quick rundown TLDR of what exactly is a data center. So in um, simple terms, it's a almost like a room of computers that houses critical applications and data for the cloud to operate. Um, so it's a little more granular than that, but basically what we're trying to convey here is the cloud that many people use on the internet, um, your favorite apps and favorite um, websites all run on these clouds and these clouds are run by data centers. Um, and these data centers have two, we can call them buckets of components to help run it. Um, the first one is that more enterprise IT focus, where that's where user data is stored, that's where the applications are actually running, that's where um, different things are stored so that people who either they log on their phone or their computer, they have access to these um, data and application. The other side of it, and the one we're mostly focused on in our domain, is the operational components, where you have um, cybersecurity systems, you have HVAC, cooling, um, CCTV, locks for security, things like that, that help run day-to-day -day operations at the data center. Um, and kind of to reiterate what we mentioned previously in the previous video is they're starting to see a lot more overlap between the two. Um, now we're starting to see devices that help run the data center that are connected to the internet, like the industrial IoT. Um, and these things not only make things, make the data center operate more efficiently, but they also um, introduce more gaps in terms of cybersecurity and more surface area that is exposed to threat actors. Um, and then before we dive in to um, cybersecurity, we do want to mention the scale at which these data centers operate at um, is huge. So like we mentioned, there's a global footprint. Uh, data centers pretty much reach almost every corner of the world, um, even in the ocean. I think you can, in the first picture uh, on the top here, some data centers uh, are actually in the water to help um, cool the, the components inside. So there is a lot of innovation in terms of data centers. Um, they usually span multiple football fields wise. These campuses are massive. They take a lot of energy, a lot of money. Um, so as you can probably tell, they're very attractive targets for malicious actors just because of how key they are to an area's infrastructure and how key they are actually to the internet's infrastructure because um, they pretty much help run the internet that 99.9% .9 of the world um, is used to, familiar with. Um, so I'm gonna hand it off to Tavisha real quick to kind of talk to a little bit more about securing our data centers and what we're seeing in terms of um, practices and processes to mitigate these risks. Thanks, Joel. That was a great introduction to data centers. So as Joel kind of mentioned, about 99% of our internet is hosted on these data centers. So when a data center is down, that could potentially cripple an organization. Furthermore, you, who would not like to be able to access their favorite applications for a day? Imagine not having connectivity to Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn. These data centers are incredibly massive. They hold tons and tons of customer data, and when they go down, they impact millions and billions of people. In the last video, I also provided an example of how malicious actors can use these sensors in data centers as a gateway to enter the data center and then move laterally through the network and mess up different controls within a data center. 
these data centers are using a tremendous amount of energy, and so they tend to get very hot. One of the most important aspects of a data center is the cooling system that allows these data centers to function by reducing the temperature within a data center. If an attacker messes with that cooling system, it could potentially lead to the data center exploding. That would result in a complete loss of data within the data center, which would have a massive impact on the customers of that organization, but it could also lead to loss of life, which is an incredibly dire consequence of a malicious actor getting inside a data center. Other examples of potential attacks in a data center include a DDoS attack, a ransomware attack, an external access attack, etc. So as you can see, there's many different ways of breaking into a data center network, and they and it could have potentially very severe implications. One of the first steps in protecting our data center is to monitor data sources within the data center. So here are some examples of potential data sources that can be monitored from a data center. You have firewall information, you have network information, which is the uh, data packets that are flowing between different devices within a data center. You have the HVAC and BAS systems, which control the temperature and pressure within a data center. You have audit log information for devices within a data center, which is log in and log out information for devices. You have rogue access point detections, which it essentially detects devices that should not be within a data center. And you have, lastly, you have physical security information that needs to be gathered from a data center. So who is entering and exiting your data center? Once you have the, these data sources being collected from a data center, the next step is to build detections on top of these data sources. So detections will help you detect when something is wrong within your data center. So as I mentioned, when you gather log in and log out information on devices within a data center, you're able to detect when someone that should not have access to a particular device is logging into that device to potentially mess with the controls. Another example is detecting devices within a data center that should not be there. A malicious actor could potentially sneak into a data center and connect a device into inside the data center that allows it to gather traffic that's passing between those devices in a data center. It could they could then use that information to again laterally move through the data center. So it could be potentially very dangerous. Though one of the most important de detections is unauthorized access to a data center. So if someone that's not supposed to have access to a data center is able to enter a data center, they could potentially do a lot of malicious activity within that data center. Um, some uh, pertaining to some of the examples I mentioned. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so very interesting. And uh, to me, it seems like this is a lot of like, you know, you're monitoring the systems and then if there's any red flags, you detect it and hopefully mitigate. Um, can you talk a little bit more about common practices or process that prevent that from happening in the first place, like stopping it before uh, they're even in the system? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, here you can see a list of common data center cybersecurity practices that can be taken to ensure that your data center is healthy. So the very first one is no USB. What that essentially means is you should not allow any external person to connect anything within a data center. So that includes USBs, hard drives, um, even connection to the internet. So that's a really good practice for ensuring that the data center remains as air gapped as possible. The second one is having a good asset inventory. If you have a really good list of exactly what's in your data center, it's a lot easier to detect when something new has been added to your data center. So that's a really great way to ensure that only the devices that are meant to be in the data center are actually in the data center. The third example is firewall rules. You want to have a list of firewall rules that allows data to flow between different devices in the data center and allows data to flow to the internet. So if there is a change in that firewall rule and there's now data flowing to the internet that shouldn't be flowing to the internet, that would be easy to detect if you have a good list of firewall rules. The next one is monitoring the physical security within a data center. 
So you want to monitor who is entering and exiting your data center so you can keep track of professionals that are not supposed to be in your data center in your data center. The last one is you also want to train your data center professionals. So if they notice something weird going on in a data center, they're able to detect it themselves. So if they see a device that's not supposed to be in a data center in a data center, they could notify security. If they see a person that's not supposed to be in a data center, data center, they can they can again notify security. Those are just a couple of examples, but these are just some general practices that you can take to keep your data center healthy. Yeah, no, and that, that was a great overview, and I think it sort of emphasizes how um, there is, you know, if you go up and down the stack, there's uh, efforts at each place to mitigate risk and to mitigate threat. So, you know, you have these that you mentioned where it's very much stopping it from happening in the first place, but if it ever does, if an actor does ever get in and, you know, it does happen, um, there's monitoring detections in place and there's mitigation after that. So, no, I think this is super, super interesting. Um, and thanks again, Tisha, for, for presenting. I think something else we're, we're building on is we started with what OTICS is, now we're in the data center, and now moving forward, we're going to talk a little bit more about specific scenarios and specific uh, practices. Um, so yeah, thanks again, Tisha, and I'm really looking forward to uh, continuing these this video series. Awesome. Thank you so much, Joel. Same here. All right. Thank you, everyone.